So our knees are together, big toes tucked under, hands resting on the thighs, and then just allowing the eyes to close. And you can really control the amount of weight that you want to put into the heels and the balls of the feet. If you move the shoulders slightly further forward, it kind of takes the pressure off. If you shift back on the heels, it's going to amplify it. So just playing with that as we stay here, we've only got two more minutes left for this first one. But I want you for these next two minutes to have the eyes closed. Take the hands from the thighs. So now as we're all ladies in the practice, have your left palm on top of the right and the thumbs to touch. Okay. So we're bringing the left hand on top of the right palm thumbs to touch and then slowly just shift the shoulders back so you really feel that they are stacked over the hips, the back of the head, the back of your back and your sacrum, align with the heels. So this is a, you can already feel it's a very fiery pose for yin practice. Today, Thursday, it's full moon. And actually after this class, I'm doing a full moon puja. So we're going to be burning up a lot of stuff that we do not want, that no longer serves us, and just to really get rid, release and remove. So here in this pose, you can also just start to bring up that feeling from the feet where I'm sure you can absolutely feel the stretch and that fire and the heat building up. And as we hold this for less than a minute now, I want you to bring to the forefront of your mind just anything that does not serve you. And for your practice today, it's gonna to be a lot about releasing and letting go. So as you're aware, we're holding the poses for maybe three or five minutes. There won't be much talking. And so during these moments of silence, that is when the mind will be busy because the body isn't moving too much. And so it's even more of a challenge to not necessarily silence the mind, but I want you to allow the mind to have thoughts, to be busy, but you're not engaging in those thoughts. Those thoughts can come up, but you're gonna let them out by breathing out through the mouth, breathing out through a lion breath, breathing out through a blubbering of the lips, whatever serves you best. So let's bring the hands now to the center of the chest, just setting an, an intention that you will stay present, you will work through the process, and your body, your breath, your mind will release and let go fully. Together, let's all take a really big breath in through the nose. Clear it out with a big sigh through the mouth. And then very well done, woohoo! We're going to bring the hands down and then the tops of the feet down. My word, tap those tops of feet excruciating but really good that one's done now so we can be very pleased and happy about that so just tapping the toes really important to wake up the feet as the feet are what connect us to the ground the ground is where we draw up the energy from the earth our power source okay now what we're going to do again knees together heels together, I want you to once more, I'm afraid, tuck those toes under, bring your bottom to your heels, this time you're going to wrap the arms around so you hold on to your feet, and then you're bringing your head down towards the earth and close to your knees, so the top of the head is on the mat, you're looking towards your tummy, and you can give your feet a little bit of a massage here, just moving the fingers around, the soles of the feet and the ankles. 
And then when your feet feel suitably massaged, just resting the hands alongside the body with the palms facing up, the backs of hands on the ground, and your breath just moving very naturally in and out through the nose on inhale and your exhale it's totally up for you up to you for a yin practice you can breathe out through your mouth or out through your nose as we're not necessarily moving in a dynamic way to heat up the body like we would in a, a vinyasa the breath really is something i want you to tune into and respond intuitively but mainly trying to make your exhale as long as possible so we keep the nervous system super chilled and relaxed as we come into these quite intense poses the poses are intense because of the amount of time that we spend in them and the silence as well just silently allowing ourselves to go inward into the body the sensations of the body into the mind and whatever thoughts just tend to be popping up over and over again and just really noticing if those thoughts serve us or not and i recently listened to a podcast uh, again listened to it lots of times how to fail with elizabeth day the mo gordat one and he calls his brain becky and when becky starts to talk to him on helpful thoughts and chit chatter he just tells Betty to go away in more polite terms. So what you can do in our practice this evening, when some of those thoughts come up, do allow them to come up because that is a process of them coming up to come out of the body. So it's good to have them, but then don't engage in them. Tell them to leave. They've served their purpose but they're not serving any good or positivity anymore. So adios, por favor. Okay, so we're gonna come all the way up on your breath in, and then just pause here, hands can rest on the thighs, toes stay tucked, stack your head over the center of the chest and hold your closed eyes in a gaze between the eyebrow center. Relax the shoulders. And then we're going to shift forward once more, release those toes, give them a little tap. And that's all we're doing for the toes, okay? So shift further, for further back on your mat so you have more space in front of you. This is where you may want to use your bricks, your blocks, or your bolster, or homemade props, because we're going to use something of height underneath the upper arm bones and elbows for our puppy dog stretch. So. We want to make sure the hips stay over the knees as we bring the arms down. So my elbows going on my block and just the sort of first half of the upper arm. Palms meet, fingers point up towards the sky and then you're releasing your head down towards the ground. OK, do make sure for this one, tops of feet on the floor, shins on the floor, hips over the knees heart down towards the earth and your head really nice and heavy, okay? So if you don't have bricks, you could use books. You could use two pillows just up on top of one another as that will be, be give you the height that you need as well. It just makes, puppy dog pose is pretty intense anyway. If you're using your arms, you could just have the arms straight out in front if you like. You could still do the elbows, just depending if it's a bit wobbly and off balance, have the arms straight. But make sure that the pillows are out in front of you enough that when you release your head down, you're not suffocating yourself and you can still breathe. Okay? As we're in the poses for quite some time, as I've said before, If you do need to come out a little bit earlier, that's absolutely fine. You judge your body. You judge your breath and respond with compassion.
as we just rest here, or not necessarily rest, but be still here. Allow yourself to just calm down by first gaining a sense of where you are. So listening out for the various sounds around you. And just like we don't want to attach to any of the thoughts that we may have, same with this searching out of different sounds and vibrations. Don't attach to those particular sounds. Try not to label them. Just allow your sense of hearing to move from sound to sound. And as you notice the mind quietening, the body becomes softer, the chest on each exhale, the heart on each exhale, just releases down towards the ground, towards Mother Earth. We're going to take two more cycles of breath in your own time here. No sense of urgency on your inhalation to come out of the pose. Carefully press down into the forearms and the elbows, depending on what prop you have. Slowly walk the hands towards you. Move your props out to one side. And then we're going to come down onto our tummy. So as you lower down, just moving onto the tops of the thighs. And then bring your forearms in front. We're coming into Sphinx pose. Elbows will be underneath the shoulders. Lengthen your legs out behind you, tops of feet on the floor, and then your palms also on the ground. And then just taking your gaze out in front of you, make sure you feel the tops of the legs press down, the hip bones press down, the chest broaden and the shoulders draw back. And we're just going to stay here for five slow inhale exhales. I want you to keep your gaze on a point. It's not a hard stare, it's just a soft blurry gaze and if you can try not to blink so this is a kriya a cleansing exercise for our eyes as well as they may start to water relax around the jaw opening the heart space and just a little bit of pinching around the kidneys to stimulate the kidney energy in the low back here as well good and then just shift your elbows apart Palms slide together, one hand on top of the other, rest your forehead on the hands and then just slowly wiggle your hips from side to side. So the hips move from left to right, your legs roll in, your legs roll out, just releasing around the sacrum as well as it being important to keep our feet nice and alive and awake. Same with the sacrum as this is again the root cen centre and if we keep the sacral bone nice and soft, supple, the energy, the bones can flow, the energy can flow all the way up the spine. And then just come back to a place of stillness. Bring the hands alongside the chest and then we're going to push onto our hands and our knees. Doesn't have to be true alignment because we're going to move straight into pigeon pose here. So a really juicy one for a yin. We'll start with the left leg, okay? So we're going to move the left knee towards the outer edge of the little finger. Make sure the heel is in underneath your right hip bone and then the right leg out in front of you. Again, because we're going to be in this one for five minutes, have some props nearby if you would like to use them. You can rest the arms on your bolster or what can be quite nice is to use a brick or a book 
to rest your forehead down and then just have the arms alongside the body in a sort of in that sort of wide sphinx pose we just had but have a play around once you do find a position that feels good with or without props without being static i want you to just shift a little bit from side to side with the hips so you kind of feel where the spots in the hip or the glute are quite tender so you're not just kind of automatically shifting everything to the left you find that center line and then you just pause there release the head release the heart In this pose, I want you to keep the lips slightly parted so we don't clench the jaw. You keep your tongue nice and soft. And total free range here. If you feel you need to suddenly do a lion, or we're all at home, if you need to do a scream or a shout, it can be very therapeutic. So I encourage you to just do what really feels good, okay? Nothing is silly here. So in these next few moments of silence, just observe what comes up for you. Observe, it may be physical, it may be mental, it may be emotional. But I want you to practice as we listened out for the sounds in the distance. Didn't attach to them, we just moved from sound to sound. Same with the thoughts here. The thoughts come up, we don't attach to them. We feel them and then let them move through us and out of us. It's important to feel the sensation or feel the emotion. We don't want to detach from feeling. But then don't hold on tight to that feeling feel it let it run through you and just repeat that process use the breath to help you Remember, long exhale. Try and double the length of your exhale to your inhale. The exhalation is what brings us into parasympathetic. So rest and digest, calming nervous system. So especially when we're tapping into the discomfort of stored up emotions, tight muscles, and having to sit with this discomfort, we want to remind, retrain, re-educate the body and the nervous system that it's okay to be here. It's okay to let go. It's good to feel it. And it's really good to release it. Releasing it by keeping the nervous system calm, releasing it by making that breath really long and steady. Okay, very slowly, we're going to come out of the pose. So wherever you are, just pressing up. Let your hips just fall to the left side. We're going to move the right leg, the back leg, all the way around to the front. So again, targeting the hips. Bottom leg can stay in the position it was. Top leg, so your right leg. Option one, bringing the heel in front of the left knee. Both feet now, I want them to be semi-flexed, okay? Option two, more intense, that right foot, you're going to place it above the left knee. Option three, even more intense, that bottom foot, the left, 
you just wiggle the toes slightly further forward. So now we've got that 90 degree angle. Your knee is over the ankle on both feet, okay? Then from here, just move the hips so you feel the weight is evenly distributed. And then we're going to slowly come forward. So again, you may want to have, if you have a bolster, you could rest your head on that. If you have some bricks that you can build, releasing the head on that. Just again, feeling how deep you want to go in the pose. Obviously, the lower you go, the more intense you're going to feel it around the hips. We tend to be tighter on one side to the other. So don't judge. Again, just feel into it. Relax the jaw. Lengthen that exhale. Let the thoughts, let the feelings run through you. using your breath. Two more cycles of breath, take your time. Relax around the shoulders as well. And then in your own time, just careful now, slowly, slowly coming up. That top leg, if you had it on top of the right, the left knee, release the right foot down. Just move your bricks to one side, your push cushions or your bolster. Draw the feet in so we can now just roll over the knees come onto our hands and knees and just wag your bottom from side to side as if you were a dog wagging your tail a little dog called poppy and then we're going to go straight onto the other side so just checking you have enough space to slide that right knee to the outer edge of the little finger right heel underneath the left hip bone, left leg out in front of you. And again, like I said, it may be different right to left side, depending on your dominant side, how you tend to cross your legs or walk upstairs, etc. So just feel into it, feel how you want your props, whether you want something under the arms, or you'd rather something underneath your head, or you're just like, nope, they all feel kind of in the way. So I'm just going to go hand solo. When you do settle down again, before just kind of collapsing and hanging out there, just have a little shift from side to side so you feel what's going on around the right thigh, the right glute. And then when you feel settled, just close the eyes. Make sure again the mouth is slightly open, tongue soft. And then just tell your skin to soften as well. When we soften the skin, suddenly we feel the pores open. And when we breathe, having nice open pores, we're just giving the body that space to detoxify, to release. mentally even saying to yourself that it is it's okay to feel and it's really okay to let go
Letting go, I find, can be a real challenge for us humans as we are creatures of habit. So really tapping into what it means to go with the flow. We, we say this many times and we have all sorts of helpful taglines, but really understanding that everything does happen as it is supposed to. And the more we can quite literally surrender to the process, that does allow us to be more present with the moment, with the people around us, with the signs and messages and signals we're getting, rather than just being sort of tangled up in the thoughts, tangled up in the past or the future. So again, like I say, it's not like we're trying to stop the thoughts. We just don't want to attach. We want to let them run through, feel them, let go. Two more breaths here. And take your time. Don't feel rushed to finish your breath cycle. When you're ready, coming up to your seat. Weight will shift to the right, back leg, left leg swings around to the front, placing the foot either in front of your right knee, option one, your foot on top of your right knee, option two, and option three, you keep the foot there and wiggle the right heel so it's in line with the knee. So juicy, juicy in those hips. Again, just feel that the weight is evenly placed on the left and right side. And then slowly, feet slightly flexed to protect the knees. So there's no sort of torque or pull on the knee. Grab your building blocks or your cushions and release forward and down. So the head is supported. Just check that you're not holding on around the neck. As well as, you know, obviously this is working around the hips. Just check in with the shoulders, the traps, that they're not, again, holding on unnecessarily. So each time you breathe out, just doing a mental body scan of the body and just telling it that it's okay to soften. It's okay to release. So we're releasing physically, educating the body there. And then we're releasing mentally as we've been practicing. Practicing by letting the thoughts come up, come out and out with that breath. That breath carrying so much goodness, so much healing. And here as we release forward, we're also targeting the back of the body. Our heart, not only at the front, but also at the back body, our spiritual heart. So feeling that healing breath, that awareness in front and in the back of the body. Two more breaths. Take your time with these breaths. Remember, long exhale. And very slowly, keep the head heavy. Slowly, slowly, we're going to bring our torso up. Carefully release that top leg down. And just pause for a moment in your seat. Legs in an easy cross-legged position. Hands resting on the thighs.
and very gently allow the eyes to open. We're coming into our final pose. So what we're going to do is just move, because we've done a lot for the hips, we're gonna move around the upper back for our last pose. So with your props, what we want to do, just bring your feet up and you may need to shift them around whilst you set up. The idea, what we're trying to create is a bit of a tier, okay? So I'm going to have, say, my one block on its highest setting, block number two on its medium setting, and then placing a bolster over those. It's a little bit unstable. So the idea is we want to kind of start low and go up. So then when you come down, we're getting an opening across the upper back like so. If you just have a couple of pillows, you could put them horizontally across the mat. And then this will be a really nice heart opener. But to protect your head, if it's a bit too much, you could place a book just underneath the back of the head as well. It's quite nice to do. So we're getting that opening across the chest. Your legs, as we have been opening the hips, option one, you could continue that hip opening and bring the soles of feet together, knees out to the side. Option two, more grounding and stability. Feet stay on the earth. Let the knees come in towards one another. Option three, classic Shavasana legs, just releasing the legs straight out in front of you, okay? Then with your hands, once you're in the pose, you feel what feels nice. If you want to have something more tangible to really connect to your body, it's lovely to place one hand on your low part of the abdomen, so below the navel, the other hand in between the, um, well, at the heart space. Or you can release the arms alongside the body. More ramping up, so really opening up around the shoulders. You could cactus the arms, so the elbows in line with the shoulders, palms facing up. And you can choose to kind of move through these variations with the hands. You don't have to stay static in the pose. Again, it's really a listening practice. But I want you to really close the eyes, close in the senses and bring them inward. And this practice of yin yoga, it is such a beautiful practice as you are giving yourself the time and the space. The space physically in the poses, the space mentally to listen. So as you rest here in Shavasana, I want you just to bring about a really beautiful feeling of gratitude into your whole body. Gratitude that you are on this journey that is life. and you get to experience all the highs and all the lows. Grateful for the sensations, the emotions, and for simply being here right now and practicing in this space with this body and with this breath. With this breath that joins all of us. Not only humans, but animals, plants. The whole world is breathing the same breath. So as you rest here in Shavasana, Allowing your exhalation to be your offering of love and healing to everything in the universe. The plants, the animals, the trees, the people. And your inhalation is breathing in the universe and everybody and everything that makes it and is part of it. Their love going back into you.
and keeping this sense of peace and very relaxed vibe as you very slowly make little flickers in your fingers and also in your toes. If it feels good, just start to rotate the wrists and move the ankles if the feet are straight out in front of you. And then lift the arms up, take a nice big stretch through the arms, straighten the legs if the feet were together. And then as you exhale, bring your feet down onto the earth. So feet bend, knees bend, feet flat, arms alongside the body so you can carefully just press up to your seat. And here in your seat, just feeling that the spine is one long neutral line of energy. Bring the hands to meet at the center of your chest, feeling everything that you have brought back into balance, the body, the mind and your breath. And as a group, let's all take one more deep breath in through the nose. A happy sigh out through the mouth. Namaste.